Okay, today we are looking at the MSI Z97 Gaming 5 ATX motherboard. Here it is in the box. If we just look at the back, there is a lot of details about some of the features of it, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Multi GPU support and etc. And you can read it all there. So, okay, so let's get this thing out of the box. First thing we see is the motherboard itself in this nice anti static bag here. We'll just put that aside and look at the accessories first underneath this little black cardboard bit here. Okay, so to start with, we have two SATA cables, one right angled and one straight. We have an SLI bridge here, nice black. Yeah, very nice. Uh, we have a, what they call the M connector, which basically is like Asus's Q connector, so it does the front I.O. You just plug it in much easily. Easier, we have a Molex 2 fan and the rear I.O. panel. That's all for that side. Okay, so we have the standard driver CD, have these nice sticky labels where you can label up all your cables. We have a quick installation guide and we have the user guide itself. Nice there for the MSI Dragon. And we have this I'm sorry I'm busy gaming thing that you put on your door and should never use in a million years. Okay, so here's the motherboard itself. So if I just take it out of the anti-static bag here and have a look at it. I do think this is subjectively a very, very pretty motherboard. So let's just flip it over quickly and look at the back. Nothing amazing here. A lovely matte black PCB. Very, very nice. Nothing spectacular there though. Okay, so let's take a quick tour of this motherboard. Starting with the CPU socket, it is socket 1150, so that's fourth and the upcoming fifth generation Intel Haswell CPUs. This is on the new Z97 chipset, which is located underneath this rather nice MSI badge here with this lovely kind of brushed aluminium. Aluminium, for those Americans watching. It features an eight phase power design, that's the VRMs are under here, and it's designed to look like two dragon claws because it's an MSI dragon Arr, right here. <laughs> anyway, of course this being an MSI board it has the standard military class 4 components, super ferrite chokes, they have um, the dart have dart caps, ten, we give like 10 years plus minimum a nice band, they have aluminium cores. Some of the things that have changed on this on the Z97 chipset, I mean there aren't much to be honest, but we have this slot right here this is an m.2 slot so and it can work through the pcie bus so it has up to 10 gigabits per second rather than the, the limit of sata which is six or you can msi do so sell, sell separately a sata express adapter here which is basically two normal sata connectors and a third one next to it that will make it super fast though using this like that will then disable number five and six which uh, I don't know which ones are five and six is that will disable that on it while you're using that but if you need throughput like that then absolutely go for it at the moment there's not much support for it there's not really many SSDs out for it yet I mean there's a Plexter one that I think you can get they're like this long or so they can slot in here so yeah that's nice Anyway, as far as the PCIe slots go, you have four X1 slots here, PCIe X1, and we have three X16 slots here. They work in each individually on their own. They'll be X16. If there's two of them, it'll be eight and eight. And if you're using all three, it'll be eight, four, four. I should say that this board supports a three-way crossfire and dual SLI. The dual SLI bridge is, of course, included in the box. There are four RAM slots supporting up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory and up to 3300 MHz speed if you're inclined to overclock your memory like that. Now for the onboard audio, this is something that MSI have particularly made a big fuss about. If you go to their website, they're really, really pushing this whole audio thing. And what, what is under here is a Realtek ALC 1150 codec. It has EMI shielding, that's what this little cover on, on it is here. It is 7.1 channel high definition audio. It features the Audio Boost 2, which is a Creative Sound Blaster Cinema 2, it's the software that goes with it. And basically it's going to immerse you in your games and sound amazing, but basically it'll just make things sound very loud and you won't need an external sound card. I mean, most onboard audio is pretty good nowadays and I don't think this is going to be much of an exception. It features a Japanese professional Nikon capacitors, and that's these right here, yeah, so they should make it sound very good. It has dual headphone amps, 
So, yeah, that's good, isn't it? Your audio connectors for it are gold, and are able to drive up to 600 ohms, which is fairly decent. I have to admit to not being much of an audiophile, so really this is much reading off a sheet to me. So, Also, this part of the PCB is isolated. When it's on, you'll get a red LED line. You can't really see it from here, but it goes along here, around here, and that it separates the PCB from the rest, so it keeps your audio as clear as possible, so it doesn't have any electrical interference from all the other electrics on this board. Okay, as for power connectors, you have your standard 24mm power connector here in the optimal position, so you can just put it out of your case and straight onto here. That's a very good thing. You've got your 8-pin power down here that is kind of... Sort of, it's very close to the VRM heatsink, but I don't, I'm not sure that would be much of a problem. I haven't, I've yet to put this in a case. I will be doing that later and having another video on this after I've used it a little bit. Okay, here is the USB onboard USB 3 plug. It's actually at a right angle, unlike many, most other motherboards. In fact, this is the first motherboard that I've personally had that has that feature. So you have to plug your USB 3 in that way. Which, I mean, USB 3 connectors, especially for like front panels, aren't. They tend to be really thick, solid cables, so I don't know how well that would go. If you've got a large case, I think that would be very, very good. If you've got a small micro ATX case, I think that could be a bit of a squeeze. But there we go, you have 6 SATA 6 gigabit per second, SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports right here. As for onboard fans, you've got your main CPU fan here, you've got your CPU 2 fan here if you need it, you have a system fan here, another one here, and another one over here. So five in total. So it gives you good options, and it's something that's pretty standard on a motherboard of this size nowadays. Coming down along the front here, we have lots of voltage checkpoints. If that's your thing, your thing, it's very much an overclockers type thing. And while recently we have seen like overclockers and gamers sort of being separated away, but it's nice to see something like that. And even though I can honestly say I will not in a million years ever touch that, so but it's very nice to know that it's there if I need it. Okay, across the bottom here we have two USB 2.0 connectors, two front panel connectors, the display for the debug code and the temperature, the TPM, that's trusted platform module, a serial connector, audio boost connector, HD audio connector, and the audio power switch. Okay, so let's have a look at the back I.O. Starting from the left we have a PS2 socket for your keyboard and mouse, plus two USB sockets here, USB 2.0 sockets here. here now these are red because that means they are optimised for gaming for like fastest response, 10 times longer lifetime when plugging in and out. And they prevent oxidization apparently, so there we go, very good. Uh, next to that we've got two USB 2.0 ports, pretty standard, we have VGA connector and DVI connector. Next to that we have the Killer E2200 specialised gaming network gigabit LAN that has packet prioritisation for your games to give you less lag and amazing gameplay. Uh, below that we have two USB 3s. Now these are the ones that are made especially for audio that have optimised stable 5 volts guaranteed to both of them. This is for best sound quality for external DACs and things like that. Next to that we have two more USB 3.0 ports and an HDMI output. And finally we have the standard audio connectors. I should mention that the one with a red circle around it has a dedicated amplified output that is optimised for studio grade headphones. It can drive up to 600 ohms, which is pretty decent, though I'm not sure anyone gaming is really going to have much use of that, but it's nice to know that it's there. Okay, so I just want to touch on some of the bundled software and features of this motherboard. There's something they call Guard Pro, which is circuit protection, humidity protection, high temperature protection, ESD protection, that's electrostatic discharge, and EMI protection. So that's all good stuff. It also comes bundled with XSplit Gamecast, and this lets you broadcast to Twitch, and Ustream, and YouTube, etc. You get six months free, which means it's a bit of a Samsung trick of giving you free trials and then making you pay for everything. But there we go, you might be okay with that. I'm not particularly. Uh, it also has the uh, Overclock Genie 4, which is like they call one second overclocking, and it can give you up to about 20% more performance. That will just be a very kind of low, safe overclock, so to speak. Uh, it also has the MSI Gaming app. Now, this controls the motherboard and the GPU overclocking at the same time. You have different profiles silent gaming and overclock. Though, normally, overclocking and gaming would be the same for me, but I don't know, maybe. It has the Click BIOS 4, or Click for BIOS, is that called? No, yeah, Click BIOS 4. It's just basically a nice looking BIOS design. It doesn't have a classic setting at all, it's all in kind of a modern looking design. It has Live Update 6, now this is just an awkward piece of software, I never ever use anything like this, I'd rather do it all manually. And 
command center, their app generally oversees all that type of thing. It has an unlimited RAM disk that comes with it. That makes it sound like an actual disk. I should say that that's just a bit of software that lets you use your RAM for temp temporary storage, such as loading entire game images so it loads insanely fast. That's about, or well, according to them, about 20 times faster than the standard SSD. But I haven't yet tried that. Uh, it comes with a supercharging USB port, which means you can increase the power to a USB port and charge your device really quickly. I'm not sure how safe that would be. And also the smart fan control software, which is, yeah, it's a fan control software. And lastly, this motherboard does support Steam OS out of the box. So after just taking this out of the box and having a good look around it, I would say the things I would like to see on it is a dual BIOS. This is something, again, it's nice to know it's there. You don't necessarily need a dual BIOS, but if you ever mess up your BIOS, it's nice to know you can flick a switch and go with another one. This is not a feature on this motherboard. I know for a fact that the Gigabyte Gaming 5 motherboard, they call it Gaming 5 as well, around the same price, that does have that feature. And also, like the Memory OK button you get on the Asus boards and the Gigabyte boards that really help when you're overclocking so you can just reset everything just like that quickly. And also there is no SATA Express as standard though as I mentioned earlier you can get an adapter for your M.2 port but I know lots of other motherboards in this range do come with that as standard but again it might, if you don't need it then it won't be an important thing to you. And that's really got to a point now where people are just going with the aesthetic of the motherboard because MSI, Gigabyte, Asus, ASRock, they all make good motherboards and you know, it's pick the one that you like the look of mostly. Okay, so yeah, thank you guys very much for watching my overview of the MSI Z97 Gaming 5 motherboard. I didn't know really whether I should actually put this into the video, but unfortunately now it is a couple of days later and I have to RMA this board back. Unfortunately it would not boot up, there is a RAM problem with the board. Uh, wouldn't Whatever RAM, whatever slot I use, it wasn't working. Lots of error codes, lots of debug codes, so yeah, I won't go too much into that. I don't want to blot it too much because these things do happen, it's just very unlucky that it's happened on a board that I happen to be reviewing. So yeah. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching, liking, subscribing, all that good stuff. We have gone over 1,000 subscribers now, and like, I'm just really happy with that. Thank you guys very much, and I will see you guys very soon.